for such a long time. I've forgotten how to do it. Now, I don't know what mic. Christchurch Mealy and Dal Zellis with me. Good morning to you. Good morning, Chris. I don't even know if your microphone's on. Can we hear the mayor there, Nelly? Is that good? Okay, I've got all microphones on just to cover all bases. Good to have you on the program. Nice to see you. Level one. Finally, we can have a guest. You're the first guest, by the way, back into the well, studio. Thank you. And I did say to you that when I could, I would. And uh, so this is the first time that I've been able to come into the into you the studio actually. as well and I really appreciate it thank you isn't it nice over the weekend we had the first level one experience and I decided <laughs> to go to the moors I went to Northlands Mall I was I was expecting to be quite quiet chock-a-block I went to the new uh, Kmart in, in in where is it in uh, Langdon's Road it's like Disneyland it's all these mega stores I was having the time of my life <laughs> well that's it's good. good that's good yes anyway are you having the time of your life you're you good you're well yeah, no, and I, 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 as I've said, I think on a few occasions when we've had our phone-ins that I just loved living in the CBD and it's just been so great just to wander around the place and, yeah, no, it's really that good. It is nice. Uh, oh, I miss living in the CBD. Uh, let's just to briefly discuss um, a, a very interesting release you put out uh, with Naitahu on Friday. Mm. And I give you credit and Naitahu for that because it was so nice to read something that was actually uplifting, that wasn't inflammatory, that actually tried to bring people together. This is, of course, in regards to the statute issue. And it was nice to read something that I thought was not trying to divide people. I mean... I could almost use the word, there was a partnership that I thought was in there. And I thought, thank goodness for that. Well, we've worked quite hard on developing that partnership approach over the last um, six or seven years. So right from the get-go, when I first became mayor, I noticed that there was no uh, no Naitahu relationship um, staff within the council. There was nobody that helped guide that relationship because it is a very special relationship that, that actually does require work. It's like any relationship, a, a partnership. Um, you know, we know that from our personal lives. You've got to keep working at relationships to make them make them happen. And so we have worked at this relationship. We've developed a joint standing committee, which uh, Te Māori Tau and I co-chair. So when this issue came up about statues, both of us felt instinctively that it was really important to have the conversation in the New Zealand context we're not part of the UK conversation. We're not part of the um, American conversation. Mm. We're not part of that their slave trade um, issues that um, that have been the basis for such a an incredible past that does require healing. And here we have a treaty. Here we have a relationship. And here we have a treaty settlement process which does speak the truth to the atrocities that occurred and does apologise on behalf of the Crown uh, for those um, atrocities and enables us to move on. Now, with a treaty relationship, there are two sides to a treaty, mm. two signatories. One of the signatories is Queen Victoria's representative. Why would we take down Queen Victoria's statue? Why wouldn't we add the other part of the story? So both to my and, we have, and, and Walker, I, right? yeah, well, we said... It's actually about telling the whole story, not just one side of the story. And uh, I've been reading this book, and I brought it in as a show and tell. Uh, this was a, a Labour MP, actually, but it's irrelevant what, what party he was. He was a, an, He's an MP in the UK. He wrote this book. It came out this year. I ordered it uh, from Scorpio Books because I believe in shopping local. Good. Um, uh, but it's called Tribes, but it's how... Our need to belong can make or break society. And he'd been asked to do a story about the end of the slave trade, the abolition of slavery, which was a big thing in the UK. 200 years ago, it was a bicentenary celebration of the end of slavery. People were willing to talk about the end of slavery. People were not prepared to talk about the UK's role in slavery itself. And so it's got me thinking about how do we have intelligent and sensible conversations about hard issues, and it is hard to do that, and we cannot be outraged. You know, outrage is not where you can start a conversation. So Tamari to I and I yeah. said, let's not start that conversation, let's not join the outrage, let's talk about our issues locally, and how do we have a conversation about how we appropriately recognise both sides of the story? I Fully agree with you, and I do worry sometimes that we are merging, the media tends to merge outrage with genuine 
uh, raises some concerns, and I don't. I think that's counterproductive. I really do need to get on to other issues. Sure. Uh, rate increases. Uh, you promised to get to a zero rates increase. Do you owe Christchurch an apology for not keeping your promise? No. Um, what I said was that we were going to work towards that, that we were laser focused on it. And actually, when you actually look at the, our, I brought my show and tell again, the draft um, <laughs> updated <laughs> annual that. plan, when, when we took it out uh, for uh, consultation at the beginning of the year, which is what my comments were predicated on, uh, we had the average rate increase across the board at around the 4.65%, with the average residential rate increase around the 2.8%. Uh, since that time, of course, and, and actually if we had just started from that point, we would be at zero. So actually we did achieve that laser focus on getting to zero based on what we had put out at that time. Since that time, though, with COVID-19, we have had the impact of losing uh, the amount of money that we were going to rely on in terms of our um, dividends coming in from uh, our holdings company and the assets that they own on our behalf as a city. Um, and of course, you know, you only need to look at the airport company to see that the extent of the losses that are being experienced in that area at the moment, it will come back, but it will come back over time. That means that next year we're facing a deficit rather than um, a surplus, and even in this financial year we're facing that as well. But the thing so, is, people so still when feel you, unhappy, you take, though. People yeah, still feel sure, unhappy with the fact sure. that there is a 3.5% increase, which appears well, to be above 1. the rate of inflation. Well, it's 1.8% as an average across the residential sector. So it's significantly lower than it was when we went out at the beginning of the year but we've come down from a far greater number than the one that we went out with. So the way that I look at it is that, yes, we did get to zero based on 4.5, uh, but unfortunately that wasn't the level of increase that we were facing in reality once those other changes had uh, happened. 2.99% increase, that wasn't included as an option, but it's in the documentation as information. Why was that not included in the public conversation? Well, look, I'm afraid that the the, the reality is is that there will be people who will just say it has to be zero and nothing else will do. And there are people who will say that actually we need to keep working steadily through all of the issues um, because I, I believe, honestly, in my heart, that we can get it down further than where it is at the moment. How much? Um, I don't know because, look, staff have worked really hard to do this in the context of not triggering a long-term plan amendment. Now, I... I don't know, I mean, I don't want to bore your um, listeners to tears, but the truth is is that we have a long-term plan process, which we're well underway with, which is the one where Dawn Baxendale has already agreed to do that complete root and branch um, review of the whole of the council's operations. That's where we go out and consult about levels of service and all of those things that that actually will make a, a real difference about getting that balance right. Um, we don't want to trigger such an amendment in this process because that would create a, because a, that would create a long -term further delays. delay. Okay. And 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 the thing is, is that I really want to get to the long term plan process because that's where we will make real change. The the problem I think that many people would have uh, with this whole argument with rates increases is that. You know, we've all had to cut our cloth, well, some of us, including yourself, and good on you for, for <laughs> taking that pay cut, by the way. I think that was a, a good thing to do in terms of leadership. We've all taken pay cuts. People have lost their jobs. The ANZ Bank suggests that it's going to be more catastrophic than we previously thought. That put out a statement, you know, I think uh, two weeks ago now, people are losing their jobs. The economy is slowing down. And... A lot, of, a lot of businesses are having to, you know, seriously cut their cloth. And others would argue, what makes the council so special, so different? Ah, uh, no, I, I think it's slightly different because in terms of what the council can contribute by way of um, keeping the economy going is actually keeping the work stream coming. You know, when you think about our capital programme, I mean, there are some people who would cut our capital programme to $200 million, slash it in half, now, if you did that, you'd actually you'd actually stop work in the contracting sector and the subcontracting sector. We don't want to put more people out of work. Mm -hmm. In terms of the capital program, 
You know, it takes over $100 million of capital expenditure in order to have a 1% impact on rates. It takes $5 million of operational expenditure to have a 1% impact on rates. So actually keeping the work going, borrowing in order to actually get um, programs of work done, that's actually a much more effective way of then paying for that over a longer period of time and not putting the pressure on the rates. So, uh, you know, and the more stuff that we can get repaired and renewed and, um, you know, working better, then the the less operational costs there are. There have been many corporate organisations and and also potentially public now with the likes of TVNZ that are, though, making the likes of staff cuts. They realise that things are different. There's not as much money as there was around. So I ask again, why is the council so different? Because as you may have seen, the Christchurch Press did quite an interesting uh, story over the weekend saying the best paid 57 staff together earn almost $11 million a year, the average salary of nearly $200,000, more than three and a half times that of the typical Kiwi worker. Um, And I just wonder why there have been no thought about trying to save costs there. Surely, surely, and I don't don't say this with any delight, but surely there might be savings there that the CEO uh, could be able to make. It it is over to the CEO in order to... um, undertake that work by negotiation. I mean, it's interesting from a central government point of view, all of the chief executives that have taken a pay cut have done so by agreement. Our own chief executive has done so by agreement. Um, There has to be a conversation that that leads to an agreement. The staff at the council uh, are, are essentially either on individual employment agreements or they're on... Um, uh, collective agreements and there has to be a negotiated position so I, I can't influence that I can't uh, make a decision about it it's outside my um, sphere of influence in terms of where I've focused my influence I've focused it on the uh, on the higher salaries um, with the remuneration authority which is which is now doing that and we've mm. had communication from Dame Fran Wilde who has made the point that um, there are going to be uh, cuts that are going to be built into uh, the um, the pay rates for councillors. So all of our councillors, because they're over $100,000 a year, will be impacted by that decision when it's implemented. Okay. We need to take a break. When we return, we'll discuss uh, the council that wants to charge the top 20 naughty users of water uh, charges. But could this punish larger families? We'll discuss that next on the programme. Stay with us. Happy. Skinny's incredible low-priced endless mobile plan has so much endless data. Also, endless talk and text. That means more data for streaming, more calls for chin wagging, and more texts for texting. All from just thirty-six bucks. Speeds reduced to one point two megabytes per second after max speed data allowance exceeded. This will impact your service. Plan renews every four weeks. TNCs apply. Tell your friends and family. Get the skinny. Happy, 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 yo. Oh. It feels great buying New Zealand-made goods. It's a chance to experience the quality, design and style that our products are renowned for worldwide. And the best part is, it helps local businesses thrive. Unite for the recovery. If you've been counting down the days till you can replace your old flooring, now's your chance. Get up to 35% off Cavalier Brimworth carpet and selected timber and laminate. Get online or visit your local showroom today. Concerned about your foundation or floor levels? Make the precision decision. If you've bought your home since the quakes and are worried about your foundations, you need to ensure they've been repaired properly. Make the precision decision. If you think you may be in the EQC on-sold category, time is running out. Make the precision decision now. Precision Solutions. For prompt, expert help. Their foundation work is guaranteed for your peace of mind. For your free foundation check, visit precisionsolutions.nz now. precisionsolutions.nz G'day, Mad Butcher. Here's some positive and proud local businesses. Because a home is more than just a house, Designer Homes makes every dream home a reality. Designer Homes develop interior and exterior design experiences that are distinctive, compelling, and of outstanding quality at an affordable price. Designer Homes, phone 0508 D Homes for more details. This lot are all going places. Hi there, out at Musgroves, our team are ready to help you with all you need to get those jobs done around your place. Call in and see us at Musgroves or go online to musgroves.co.nz. 
Musgroves. Less waste, more purpose. Open Monday to Saturday. Three Musgroves close off Wigram Road. Locals supporting locals. It's a win-win-win. Green Builders is one of the leading architectural builders in Christchurch. As well as new builds, they also offer house renovations and additions and stunning landscape treatments. With over 50 years' experience, Green Builders have earned a reputation of providing interior and exterior excellence. Visit greenbuilders.co.nz for details. I love winners. On ads.co.nz. We're local. Local news, local issues, local views. Canterbury Mornings with Chris Lynch. Thanks to Team Hutchinson Ford, the home of Roush Performance Upgrades for Ford Mustangs. Chewham Street in the city. News Talk ZB. It is News Talk ZB with Chris. Uh, we're back with Christchurch Million Dalzell. Yeah, let's discuss. So the council wants to charge the top 20% water users uh, water charges uh, some have suggested this could punish larger families what do you say to that no so larger families you know it, that that were over the limit over the 20 percent um, use uh, they would be um, that th- they would have an opportunity to talk through what their use is, usage actually is um, sometimes you know people have broken pipes as well which lead to larger use so that that would be rebated as well. So there there are provisions in there to deal with uh, the reality of people's actual situations. But, but let me just give you one little con- yeah. factoid. One little factoid because this was the this was the turning point for me. Twenty percent of our top users use fifty percent of the water. Twenty mm-hmm. percent use fifty percent. That's a lot. So the idea is that, and we're not charging twice. So you pay for a certain amount in your rates, um, and once you once you reach that limit, there is a there is a, a, a an um, there's a, there's amount. So every household has three hundred and thirty liters per day or something. I can't remember the exact figure, but it's all in the draft annual plan. Mm. Um, and uh, and then there's an allowance on top of that. And once you go over that, that's when you um, that's when it you fall like into the though, top twenty percent. What if Mrs. Smith, who lives on Fenilton Ave or Fenilton Road, and has got a beautiful big garden, she wants to water her garden morning, noon, and night within the law? And uh, uh, Mr. Smith, who may live somewhere else, uh, says, "Well, I've got a big family. How, how are you going to ah, differentiate?" So that? it's actually the one who who waters the lawn that is probably more likely to trigger the overuse. But not if you're on a small section. I mean, it's we're talking about somebody running an irrigation system, essentially. So, But there are people that use way too much water, particularly in the summer months. Now, we're not charging for the water. We don't have the right to do that. We're charging for the use of the infrastructure. Mm-hmm. This is actually about getting people to think twice about using the water um, in a way that is wasteful. It's about conserving water. Um, and I actually think it's a really good basis for the bigger conversation that we'll be able to have with the long-term plan. Yeah. We can do this minor adjustment in the annual plan, but we could do a major adjustment, and actually that's then identifying what is the base limit, what do you pay for that, and then everything over the top okay, You is know what people are going to be saying, though. Gee, well, the Belfast water plant's going offshore for free. Yes, but you know as well as I do that we don't control that at all. We have nothing to do with it. ECAN is the one that does. And the real problem with that water plant is that there was a pre-existing water use for an old plant that was there years ago. The the water plant, the the, the water use um, consent has not been used for years and they were allowed to transfer it to a bottling plant. Now, if they hadn't been allowed to transfer it, they would have been declined because no new water consents can be issued in our area. This is our precious drinking water we're talking about. Mm. But it is ECAN that is in control of that, not the council. Okay. Other question that people want me to ask you, have you been in contact or has the serious fraud office been in contact with you? I'm afraid it's all over in the lawyer's hands now. So, um, yes, there has been contact made and it is all in the hands of the lawyers. Okay. And that's all I'm allowed to say. They've interviewed you? <laughs> No. <laughs> they haven't interviewed you. I'm not allowed to say okay. any more, sorry. All right. Finally, I think what is really important to, to note, 
is the public can have their say. If they're not satisfied with anything to do with the rates increases, the public can have their say, can't they? Mm-hmm. Right now they can go to the council website and make a submission saying yay or nay, correct? Yes, they can, um, but I'm asking them to do a little bit more than that. I'm asking them to look at some of the issues in here. I'm asking them to look at the water use issue. I'm asking them to look at glyphosate use. Um, There's a huge cost in removing glyphosate and there's some issues about the alternatives. Some of the natural uh, product that was being used as an alternative actually was causing some was steam, wasn't it? Damage. Well, no, into the waterways. It's very problematic. So I, I just want people to understand that there are some other issues in here that we'd like them to give us some feedback on. There is a proposed increase in here for some of the community groups that we do provide funding for, mm. and we do that collectively as a city. Every person I ever meet is involved in some sort of community mm. group. I'll get you a coming to us to for, do the, uh, the, 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 the summary yeah, for me. But they're coming to us for, for, for a little bit more money just for security over this period. So we've just said it hasn't increased for years. How about just a little increase just to tide us over? Okay. Christchurch Millie and Dalzell, thank you for, very much for coming in. Before you go, actually, I'm kind of getting excited. Uh, surely there must be some sort of events that might be returning to the city now that we've now that we've got no COVID-19. Mm. I'm just trying to think. Anything on the top of your head that, that I, I can think know, of? I don't know, but I, I've been I talk- think the home show is going to be back, uh, at, I think, in the Horn Castle Arena. I think that's going to be available to the I'm public. not sure. I'm going to anyway. leave you to do all the advertising okay, I'll get for back the to events. You, and we'll get your press secretary <laughs> to get that summary of the uh, annual plan. <laughs> and we'll do a quiz and get the, the top lines. Nice to see you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. It is News Talks. It'll be sort of come on the program. Uh, we'll give you more details on this excellent photo competition. And you're more than welcome to come through on the phones on 0800 80 The news is moments away here at News Talk Z.